What's up guys, Forrest here, and it finally happened. I finally got out of having my office and bedroom in the same space, moved into a new house with my fiance, and now I have this space, this office space for myself. Still don't know how I'm gonna set it up. I have my desk right there. It's a standing desk, so I can't like put it over here right under that little slope, and there's another slope right here that's out of frame. And I'm just trying to figure out exactly how to set it up, but for now, I actually have to use the window light back there as my actual lighting, because I have no lighting. But I plan to get this whole studio situated within the next few weeks with lighting. I may be building a new desk, and I have to get everything else hung up, like that sitting on the floor, and I have uh, another frame under that blanket, so I gotta get a few things situated in the room. But now that everything is moved into the house, and just gotta do a little bit of rearranging, I want to make a video about the 2018, wait, What's it called? What's it called? The 2018 Stack Overflow Developer Survey results. I didn't personally take the survey. I never got notified about it or anything like that, at least that I read. I want to talk about the results, go over it with you guys, and kind of take it, say like what I would answer if I were to take this survey as well. If you don't know what the Stack Overflow Developer Survey is, basically, here's the overview of it. This year, over 100,000 developers told us how they learn, build their careers, which tools they're using, and what they want in a job. Basically, the questions that we go over will explain essentially what it is. So let me figure out how to screen record on my iPhone. I know we're able to do that nowadays, and let's get started. All right, I got it already set up, but uh, my fiance just got home, brought me some Chick-fil-A. And if you've never had the vanilla iced coffee from Chick-fil-A, you're missing out. My buddy Dylan, who, if you follow me on Twitter, you know as the guy I play duos with in Fortnite, is also one of my best friends since re really young. He's a groomsman of mine. He showed me this one day, like uh, two years ago, and I've been addicted ever since. It's really good. I don't care if it's winter, I don't care if it's summer. Vanilla iced coffee is fire. Well, it's iced, but fire is a slang term. Okay, let's get to the to the survey. All right, so let's take a look at these results. We're gonna scroll right past geography because, I mean, you can look at the map on your own, but developer roles and starting off with developer type. The crazy thing is the top three of this is all within the web development industry, I'll call it. Backend developer, full stack developer, front end developer. Me personally, I would have my number one choice at the fourth section, which is mobile developer at 20.4%. If you're able to choose more than one, because I don't know if you could just choose one or you could choose multiple, I would fit into mobile developer, student at 17.1%, and then also down here at data or business analyst at 8.2%, because that's where my professional experience lies with all my past internships and things of that nature. I'm actually in the interview process for uh, right here at 7.7% as a data scientist. Although I don't have a master's, master's degree, they really like my resume. They brought me in for an interview, so I'm really wait, just waiting to hear back from them. I don't know how it's gonna go, considering I'm sure everybody else who applied and actually had interviews for this job had a master's degree and maybe even more work experience than me but I mean it's been a good experience so far so let's cross our fingers all right so down below we have contributing to open source if I get that lined up properly I would say no so sure I use github I upload all my iOS applications I think I've uploaded a one or two Android applications and a few artificial intelligence programs but I don't really fork off of other people's projects and then push back into them try to contribute to their projects I mean, I've done that with my group, like within school projects, because we either use Git or GitHub. But I would say no, because I don't really just go on GitHub and, and work on just anything. Coding as a hobby. So when I first read coding as a hobby, I thought 80.8% of people only code as a hobby. They don't even work professionally when it comes to coding. And that's how many people like took the survey. 80.8% of 98,855 who responded to the single question. But then I read down here below professional developers that says many developers work on code outside of work. So they're not saying people who only code as a hobby. They're pe saying people who also or only code as a hobby. So you can be doing software development work for whoever, whatever job you work for, Facebook, yada, yada. And if you come home and you code your own projects, whether that be open source, iOS apps, whatever, you code as a hobby. So at first I would have said no because I code like that's for my profession, but I'm gonna say yes because I do code as a hobby. I create my own iOS applications and so on and so forth. All right, so let's move on down to experience. So the new section here, years since learning to code. 
I would fit in with the 24.8% of people where I learned to code, been learning to code for 3.5 or three to five years rather, because you're always learning to code. So I'm guessing this question is when you started learning to code, like seriously. And that was about four, maybe even closer to five years ago when I started university. I didn't, I didn't code anything before I started university. And a lot of people think that's, they're in a poor position because they're, in, they're 16 or 15 years old with no coding experience. It's like, I was 18 years old, 19 years old even with no coding experience. I was getting some of my general education done and looking into code, but I wasn't really coding anything. So when I got actually into like those coding courses, when I really started to code about four to five years ago, years coding professionally. Now, see, I've had many internships where I'll write SQL queries. I've never had something like a job engineer job or or iOS developer job, what have you. So I would say zero to two years, even that all that SQL work as a systems analyst, systems analyst intern rather, didn't accumulate to over two years. So yeah, I definitely fit in with a 30.1% of other people. Years of professional coding experience by developer type. This takes like the first metric of developer type in this last metric we just discussed of years coding professionally and just kind of makes this. Of course, the top are gonna to be more senior positions like engineering manager. You're not gonna come in here with two years of experience or zero years of experience and become an engineering manager. So of course, those people, those types of jobs are gonna have more professional workforce experience. All right, so education. How many developers are students? Yes, full time, 19.4%. That's where I would be. Educational attainment. Considering I'm in my final stretch of my bachelor's degree, like literally I have a month left, bachelor's degree, 46.1% is where I would have labeled myself. Undergraduate major, um, computer science, sure, computer science, computer engineering, software engineering is going to take the crown. That's where I fit in, 63.7%. This is a really interesting survey too. It's it's just really cool. I love to look at metrics. I love to look at data. I love to just see what other people are like. So I'm glad I'm glad Stack Overflow got this done. Other types of education, um, you teach yourself new languages, frameworks, or tools without taking a formal course. I mean, I have, but I've also taken an online course in programming or software development. I've taken real like. Uh, college, not real, but university courses to learn software development. So this one, I'm kind of all over the place here. Ways developers learn on their own. Even in classes, I learn on my own. I don't learn everything sitting behind a desk watching my professor code. I go home, I use the resources at home like the second at 82.7%. I look up questions and answers on Stack Overflow. If I'm having a problem, guarantee someone else has had that problem before, asked a question on Stack Overflow and gotten an answer from it. So I most likely would fit into that because I don't, you not sure I've read official documentation and or standards for the technology, but I learned best by developing something and then asking questions when I get stumped. And that's when Stack Overflow comes to equation. That was quite the mumbled sentence there. That's when Stack Overflow comes into the equation. Sorry about that guys, good grief, I can't even talk. Why do developers part participate in hackathons? Well, I've never participated in a hackathon. I mean, I've tried to attend a few, but every time one would come along, I would be swamped with coursework. So, so it's either spend all of that time at a hackathon or spend some or all of that time trying to better my grades for my school. So of course I'm gonna pick the school because although good experience, you're gonna learn a lot. Over here, I'm also gonna learn a lot and I'm gonna make sure I don't lose thousands of dollars by failing courses. I just kind of weighed, you know, risk reward type deal and I went with that. Finding a job after boot camp, never been to a boot camp, so can't answer that. Demographics, we're gonna skip demographics because I mean, it just physical appearance, things of that nature. I'm gonna go all the way down to programs and languages, I think it's called. Oh, I lied. So it's called most popular technology, starting off with programming, scripting, and markup languages. I'm glad they didn't call all of these programming languages. Stack Overflow, you're smart. So of course the top of all respondents are going to be the front end, the full stack, the back end developer type, type work, JavaScript, HTML, CSS, yada, yada. SQL does fit into that because SQL is used majorly within that, within the, you know, the backend development. But SQL is also used, you know, to access other databases that aren't at the backend of websites. So for me, I would have answered SQL because of my workforce experience. I would answer Java because that's like my main language. C++ because I learned that alongside Java. Swift, oh, I think I passed Python and those are the five I would choose. So SQL, Java, Python, C++, and Swift for iOS development. All right, so down to frameworks, libraries, and tools. Let me guess, the top few are most likely going to be web development technologies. Oh, Node.js, Angular, React. This is, 
this is such a surprise. Who would have thought? <laughs> to be honest, for me, I've looked into Xamarin a lot, but the one I've actually used out of all of these is TensorFlow. I'm currently in a course where we're creating this augmented reality Android application, and we're using TensorFlow to work with the machine learning in that augmented reality uh, application. So TensorFlow is what I would have chose. Down to databases. Me, I've created so sure i've used html css and all that from way back up here you know i've used uh, javascript html css sql even php down here to create a slack clone and within that Slack clone you know i use a php to connect my front end that i just listed to my back end which was mysql 58.7 percent however i've also used sql lite in an android application or two so i guess i'll kind of consider that i mean i considered mysql most because that's like that's like it I use Firebase and things of that nature for iOS applications because for me it's easy. I mean, I don't really have to worry about much. It's just, it is what it is. I like Firebase. I don't like to work with the backend. All right, so platforms. This is platforms not that you use, but you develop for. I would choose iOS down here at 15.5% first and foremost because that's kind of my thing. And then I would probably choose Android because that's kind of what I've been getting into a lot with the past two courses I've taken. One being an Android development course, the other being the augmented reality course I just mentioned. That's probably where I would lie. But I've also, right here, I've used Firebase for my development, the, you know, 14.5% right under iOS. So I'm not, I've used Firebase in my iOS applications, but I've never developed, do you, do you develop widgets for Firebase? I don't know. I haven't looked into it that far, I guess. And then I think that's where I'm going to end it off because like some of this most loved, dreaded, wanted, I, there's a lot going on here. I wanted to just answer those few main questions. Hold on, let me, let me make sure I save the screencast, otherwise it'll just delete itself. Thank you, iPhone, for that. But that's where I'm gonna end it. I would love to, I wish I could have access to the survey questions. I'm gonna ask all of y'all to take the survey and me get y'all's responses. Cause I wanna know like how many of y'all come here because of iOS development? Or how many of y'all do computer science work and that's why you're you're on my channel and then you do things maybe like Java or Python or C++ development. I would love to know all of that information within everybody on my channel. That would be a cool metric for YouTube analytics to pick up, but that obviously wouldn't make sense considering you know I'm like one in a few that are iOS development or software development type of channels. But I mean, one could wish, right? One could wish. All right, guys, it's getting really dark out here. I have that light and then I have this sunlight like I mentioned earlier. So uh, I'm going to finish this video here. I hope you enjoyed it. Also, oh, did I mention that Discord and my merch stuff is already uploaded down below. And also my Twitch link is down below. So follow that, join the Discord channel. If you are negative, I will ban you without a doubt. So be positive and let's grow this community together. Help each other out with computer science, iOS development, whatever, positive, informative. I think this is a good step forward for us. So till next time guys, have a good one. Peace.